Does EJ hate when people refer to him as Magic Johnson's son? People are not that bold in real life. And I'm just like, if you have something to say, you can say it to my face. You lost a friend. Her and I were soulmates and we were so connected that there was really no room to have a boyfriend or a man. Does EJ ever want to transition? If you can't handle what's about to go down, please change the channel. Please. Because we actually kiki like this all the time. All the time. Can we go back to the day we met? They were shooting the pilot for Rich Kids, and uh, you were the only other black person there. Yes. And so I said, let me go sit with this queen and get to know him a little bit better. And we we kikied, and um, we talked about the, sh like, you know, the process of the show, and then you came to New York. Yes. And then we hung out at Barney's. Uh-huh. And um, you uh, helped me get a guy's number, which was everything. <laughs> and I By still talk to that man. I haven't seen him in, like, two years or a year and a half, but I still talk to him. You were so shy when I first met you. I think, yeah, I was like definitely shy when it came to like men. I didn't really know how to like approach guys, like what the protocol was. The craziest part about guys that I've noticed with you is they're never gay. And I don't still understand it <laughs> after like running with you hardcore for six years. No, I still don't understand it. My therapist doesn't understand it either. Everyone thinks it's a joke. Everyone they're... thinks it's a joke until they see me in action. But how do you know? I always can tell how men look at me mm -hmm. and like how, how it feels. And mm -hmm. like then I know like, okay, maybe I can pursue this or like, no, maybe it's not worth it. Especially with the ones who are like, when I point and I'm like, I'm going to get that man. And everyone's like, you're crazy, bitch. Like, that man, <laughs> like, Mr. Muscles over there, I was like, I'm going to get him. And it may not be tonight, it may not be the next night, but definitely, I'll get him. And I always gag him. I always do. You mentioned something that you're good at, and you, coming for bitches. That's what I used to do on television. Yes. But in real life, I feel like you come for people in the most eloquent way, and it's <laughs> normally dudes or girls who give you that side eye. You know, getting older, I have decided that I'm only coming for people who actually absolutely deserve it. The first come for I've ever witnessed, we were at Booty Bellows one night. There was like this big dude and he made like, I don't even know what he said. He was like 6'6", six, six. he was huge, this thug ass dude. And you had this like Balenciaga skirt on and I'll never forget the guy said something and I saw your head whip back and you were like, sir, sir. And then you clacked halfway down sunset and followed his ass to like get in his face to let him know that what he said was closed-minded and ignorant at that moment i was scared that he was going to hit you have you ever been in a position where you thought somebody was going to turn around and hit you no but i will say that i was into doing that back then because that's when i got a lot of those comments like on my instagram and so my thing is just like and that is just that's what it resonated with so true when people say like you know, you're big online, but not in person. People are not that bold in real life. And I'm just like, if you have something to say, you can say it to my face. Yeah. If you ever get the opportunity to say, you know, have something, some read, you can come up to me and read me if you want to. But like, you know, get off my Instagram. Just yeah. be, be, be real about it. What's been the best part of your, I want to call it a transition, but your evolution. You lost all this weight, but now you've turned into this glamazon. What part of it has been the best for you? I feel now. I feel like now is the best time of my evolution. I feel like, well, I'm also, I also will also say I'm, I constantly evolve. Like I'm always constantly doing something else. Um, I handle myself a lot differently. Mm -hmm. And I'm happiest with, with, with this new person that I've kind of become over the past like year or so. I've done a lot of growing, I, I think. Let me ask you this question. You were born into wealth and your family's wealth was very public as well as your own success. How did you weed people out of your life and how did you not get get taken advantage of or have you? I have been taken advantage of many times <laughs> and like not in the cute way. Um, What's the worst? I have to separate them into like different categories. First you have the ones who take advantage of me, you know, who want to just like, you know, turn up and be cute and be friends. And then you have the the men who want to take advantage of me and they think that they can, you know, use their sexual or like their like masculine wiles to blind me yeah. from, you know. Knowing what the, what the T is. Yeah, exactly. I'm bringing them into spotlight and giving them gifts and you know what I'm saying. So it's like there's two separate categories. Um, but there's always just, you know, a, a tell. It always tell, takes like one or two something to spark and be like, 
um, okay, like, you know. This is not. This is not what it needs to be. In this bowl is a bunch of questions that I always get about you. <laughs> Literally. What? Like, every now and then I'll go home to Louisiana or I'll be somewhere, and people will ask me these, like, very personal questions about you. So we're going to pick oh a few God, from here. Oh, my God. I'm very nervous. And they're very hilarious, too. But people want to know. People want to know. Oh, my God. Between the two of you, who falls harder for a romantic interest? Now, you know the answer to this question. It's you. It's you. No, bitch, it's you. Oh, wow. I have to go. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> like, you really It tried. is you. Girl, I don't have a heart. What are you talking about? You know that. <laughs> I had that removed a long time ago. <laughs> bitch, please. Okay, okay. You two are such unlikely friends. How have you two, <laughs> coming from different backgrounds, created this friendship? First of all, why are we unlikely friends? I don't really like that f- phrasing. Because you're Mrs. Daisy and I'm Huck. Wh- what? <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. D- Mrs. Daisy and, Ms. and Huck were friends. Not at first. Well, that's but, true. And but we were not friends at first. We weren't not friends. But it's weird because I'm five years older than you. Yeah. I can admit that now. It took me a long time. You know, I was broke, and my parents made a combined thirty thousand dollars a year coming from Louisiana. I lived in a nine hundred square foot house, and I think from the outside, people just assumed that you know, how could you two be friends? Well, first of all, let me say that I've had friends over the years from all different kinds of socioeconomic statuses, and I've always had that. And I think that does a, lo- a lot of common misconception. I think, especially because also after the show. They, like, people just assumed that all my friends were, like, super duper wealthy and, like, we all just, like, live these fabulous, thank you, lives together. And to be quite honest, like, that was the first time, like, when I started hanging out with a group of kids who were, like, uber duper wealthy, too. Yeah. That was different to me. I met you at that party and we hit it off and, like, you know, we text and whatever. And then, you know, we hung out and we became friends. And, like, that's just how, you know, normally I would make friends. It's yeah. not just like, oh, well... Do you have a black card? Well, I also have a black card. Well, let's be friends. Like, (laughs) the world doesn't work like that. Um, Does EJ hate when people refer to him as Magic Johnson's son and not by EJ? I don't really mind when you, you know, people call me Magic Johnson. Like, if you come up to me and say, aren't you Magic Johnson? I'm like, yes, but I'll always say, yes, I'm EJ EJ. Johnson, like, will be my reply. And that's fine if you ask a question, but just don't shout the name at me like I'm supposed to be like, oh, hey. (laughs) Because that's not my name. I mean, like, that's just a fact. It's just like, it's not my name. It's his name. And he's worked very hard for that name and done all this amazing stuff to give it clout and give it, you know, all of this you know, and get all that love and, and, and respect that, like, you know, that he's gotten over the years from, like, the entire world. And that should be his name. So I don't have to respond to it because it's his. <laughs> Speaking of your dad, when did you realize at what age that, oh, shit is different? Like, this guy is something bigger than just a dad. It wasn't until I went to middle school where, like, you know, there was a kind of a more diverse kind of di- dynamic I just had like all these boys just coming up to me and like talking to me and like wanting to be my friend and like talking about my dad and I'm just like I I I don't really know what happened in that game in like 1980 whatever and who did this and Larry Bird and whatever I'm like I he's just dad like I mean I don't know oh and then one time Elisa and I went to the movies with him, like back when he had his theater we walked in there on our way to the concession and some lady screamed and fainted and you were like, and this we were is like, not right. Is she, is she going to be okay? Like, should we call an ambulance or something? And then, he, you know, my dad was just like, make sure that woman's all right. And then, like, <laughs> and like, she, like, got herself together enough to give him a hug, but was just, like, sobbing. And we just, like, did not get it. We were like, what is wrong with this woman? Like, I think she might be insane. <laughs> and, like, I think she needs help. Like, I'll never forget that. Me and Elisa were just like. Ooh, this is a good one. What kind of guys does EJ like? Do you want to answer that or should I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because they go in phases. They do go in phases. There was a long Middle Eastern phase. Yes. Then there was like the tatted mixed guy phase. And then I feel like in the last six months, you've been looking for someone with more substance. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. A lot has changed. First of all, I realized that my man is not going to meet him, like, literally, like, at a club or anything, like, obviously. And, like, that's where I used to troll, like, for men. And also, I had to go, you know, we all had to go through a hoe phase, and I, I think I'm successfully out of mine. <laughs> I am. I'm out of it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I had a very good, and I keep telling people this, I had a really good run. And I have a lot of great memories and terrible ones, but mostly great ones. So your whole phase was successful? Very successful. I just wanted to feel sexy and to get male attention and to just, you know, get guys and and kind of just and and do that whole experience because I I didn't didn't really have that before. And so when, you know, I was started to get it, I just, you know, took it and ran with it. But it was I needed it to come to this point where I'm like that was great and cool, but like it's time. It's time. It's just time for something real cuz like I never really had like a serious serious like relationship before. Uh oh, this one I get so much and I'm so happy you're here to finally King set the record straight. Oh God. Does EJ ever want to transition? Does he ever think about it? Okay, Was I, it a possibility? I answered that question multiple times. And my answer is always, he likes his d I like myself the way that I am. I'm very happy with, with myself. And I think, I always say that I think that if you feel like, you know, you're not in the right body, then by all means, you know, yeah. get to where you want to be. I don't feel that I'm in the wrong body. I feel like this is the body I'm supposed to be in and I can dress it up, you know, mild dress to wild, it dress it down, wear nothing at all. I can be butch. I can be femme. I can do whatever I want with it and work with it. And so I don't feel the need to transition. I'm almost 100% positive I won't. Um, but I just, I you know, I'm just very comfortable in my own skin. I just, I like my body. And, you know, if I want to put on a wig and a beat and, like, give you, you know, really, really, really something really, really fishy, then I'll do that. But I don't have to do that all the, I don't want to do that all the time. Yeah. And for the white people out there, we'll define fishy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a pop-up. All the straight people. We're going to tell you what fishy is right over yeah, here. Yeah, right over here. Um... Something happened this year that kind of changed your life a little bit, and I just want to touch on it really quickly. Um, you lost a friend. Mm -hmm. How has that changed your outlook on life, and what have you learned from it? Oh, it changed everything, you know. Not every aspect of my life uh, changed from that. Really to have your the rug kind of like taken away from you and out of your control and there's nothing you can do and it so abruptly it really forces you to take a look at your life and 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 change and I honestly think because her and I were soulmates and we were so connected that there was really no room to have a boyfriend or a man for me because like I was you know I, I had her. Yeah. And I know that that what that kind of love and that kind of like soulmate connection felt like because of her and um it just definitely take, you know, really helped me grow up, you know. She really has helped me become the person I am today. And, like, this nuanced person, this nuanced bitch that I'm bringing in 2019 um, is what I've been working on since I lost her. And because I know that, that sh this is the person that she'd want me to be. I love that. Yeah. Tell me, what do you see for yourself this year? I'm putting it in a vault. And <laughs> when they come true, I'm, I'm going to replay universe. Put in the universe. What do you see for yourself? And be specific with the universe. Specific? Okay. This year in 2019, I see myself dating someone seriously. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't call him my boyfriend, I will be dating someone seriously. Like, you know, putting my effort in. Um, I will have a role on something, acting. I really um, want to do scripted. More recently, I've just been kept watching movies and television shows, and I'm just like, I need to do this. I need to be a part of something like this. I need to be a part of something bigger than myself and tell other people's stories. Because I've told my story, and that's been great. But I want to tell other people's stories. And so I was like, you know what? Like, I need to get serious about this. And so I you know, started taking classes, and I've been getting a lot of really cool auditions. And just doing the work has been really, really wonderful for me. Yeah. It's one thing to look cute and run around and, you know, <laughs> get into fights with other girls and, you know, be beat and be fabulous. And I'm very good at that, as we all know. But I, this is something that also challenges me. And I, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I'd like a little bit of a challenge. So I'm, I'm excited to take this on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, cheers to 2019. You're my best friend. No, oh, you're my best friend. Yay. Jan and Jill. Jan and Jill. Lord <laughs> help us all. Like what you saw? Hit subscribe. You don't want to miss any new episodes of Just a Sip, and you can catch up on any past episodes. The tea was hot, I'm telling you.